Hello everyone, welcome to Tactica Imperialis and to today's video. Today is going to be another My Thoughts On video and what I wanted to talk about today is a topic that I saw on a forum thread that then got me thinking and then the idea struck me to make a video at 2am so if I look tired that's why. So what I wanted to talk about today and I'll try and find the um, thread link as well so as I can put that in the description is the idea of terrain management, um, or more accurately, battlefield management and the role of terrain in doing so. Because I find that that's a very interesting topic of discussion that, to be honest, I hadn't really considered because it's never something that's struck me all that hard before. So, to sort of try and help you understand what I'm on about, what is Battlefield management. Well, battlefield management is probably a term that um, applies across all of wargaming and probably as well from actual proper military strategy. It's taking what's on the battlefield, the terrain within it, its features, and using it to your advantage, maximizing the benefits you can receive from it and hindering your opponents with it as much as possible to give your troops the advantage to win a battle. So it might be, in a real-world scenario, taking advantage of natural choke points, such as valleys or rivers, or perhaps using high ground or ruins to gain a good position of fire. I don't know. Uh, whereas in wargaming, well, to be fair, a lot of it is quite similar. It's taking advantage of what the terrain that's on the battlefield offers you and trying to set up a battlefield that not only has a narrative... Um, sense, but also one that can be exploited for uh, your gain or your opponent's. Because obviously when you set up a battlefield, typically in 40k and AOS, you set the battlefield up first. So you set it up kind of neutrally, maybe a little bit thematically, try and make it look like a typical battlefield, and then you go and play on it and try and maximise the terrain from there. So what this thread post was about was the idea that the games that GW are currently making, 40k and AOS in particular, seem to lack this aspect of battlefield management. Because the terrain rules, particularly they called out Age of Sigmar here, have very little going for them. They don't do a lot. They're just line of sight blockers and obstacles, and not much else. They don't really have the same interactivity that a lot of other war games, um, I'm sure that you could probably think of one if you play several of the tabletop games, offer in terms of using that terrain to your advantage, maybe taking advantage of the various special rules that it has in order to gain advantage and or punish your opponent. And that's a really interesting idea, and I'll, as I say, I'll leave the thread in the description, you can have a read of it for yourself and see what you think. Uh, but it got me thinking about how you can try and implement battlefield management and terrain into your games. Because if the game system doesn't do it for you all that naturally, because the rules aren't really built around that, well, one, why are the rules built around that? I think that's worth discussing. And two, if you do want to do that sort of thing, because that sort of thing is appealing to you, how? How do you go about it? So... To clear up probably as a counterpoint to this uh, forum post, which I may have been posted a while ago, I, just got, I saw it on my Facebook feed today. Um, the reason why I don't think the games go for heavy terrain battlefield management is because, at least particularly for Age of Sigmar, it's about streamlining and about game flow as it is uh, as opposed to realism. Because a realistic war is nothing like a battle that takes place in the mortal realms or really in the 41st millennium. You've got exceptionally powerful weaponry, um, magic and psychic powers flying about, you've got ginormous monstrous killing machines, fantastical troops all over the place in both systems. Realism kind of has to take a step back in some ways and the way that GW writes the game is not about trying to make it as ultra-realistic as possible. Because if that were the case, everyone would be super vulnerable to las guns, pretty much. And bolters would be the most destructive forces around, because they're, they're rocket-propelled grenade launchers in their own way. They should be utterly destroying people, not just 
denting their armor. So they sort of step away from realism and go into this sort of fantastical suspension of disbelief almost. And then they try and improve the game flow. Because if you take the very complicated terrain rules that you would need to introduce that realism, you slow the game down. Because let's say you have different rules for tank traps, barricades, barbed wire, craters, trenches, buildings, ruined buildings, bunkers, all sorts of different terrain pieces. Any terrain piece you can think of, if all of them had long-winded, complicated, realistic rules, a lot of time would be spent looking at those rules and then studying those rules, and that slows the game down and breaks down the natural game flow, which, if you're playing something like Age of Sigmar in particular, I find that the flow of the game is something I actually really enjoy. You're not spending a long period of time trawling through your books, looking for rules clarifications or anything like that. It's just, you put your models down, you start moving, you start rolling, and the game just goes. A little bit more. 40k does this as well. I don't think it does it quite as well because of its, particularly if you're playing Maelstrom missions, you have a lot more detailed objective focused gameplay and they do have some terrain special rules knocking about. Sigma has them too, but not to the same extent. They just have this terrain has one extra rule that you roll for at random as a rule of thumb. Other than the faction specific terrain pieces like the Loon Shrine, uh, the Gnarl Moors, the Gloomtide Shipwreck, Sylvaneth Wildwoods, that sort of thing. So I think it's an argument for game flow because it just, the game really runs smoothly right now, particularly if you're not playing it in a ultra competitive setting. And I know that that's me talking as a little bit of a filthy casual as opposed to someone who plays that sort of game. And maybe if you play a very competitive mind, then you don't care so much about game flow and game feel so much as you do about strategy and tactics. So, let's move on. What are the things you can do if you want to try and incorporate battlefield management into your games of Warhammer 40,000 and Warhammer Age of Sigma? The first thing you can do is the battlefield when you're setting it up. So, obviously you don't know who's going to be controlling which area of the battlefield when you start a game. Unless you're playing a very specific mission, such as, for example, an Age of Sigma Siege. Generally, you have to set up the board so that it's quite balanced because you don't know where you're going to be deploying at that point, generally anyway. So when you're setting the battlefield up, when you're as you go through putting terrain pieces down, either as dictated by the rules of the game or just at random or by your narrative whim, consider how you can set that terrain up to maximize its efficiency and its potential use. So instead of just saying, oh, there's a building here, there's a building here, uh, there's a thing here, oh, the tile has a has a river on it, uh, we don't have any rules for that, we'll not use that. Think about how you can um, try and set the board up to look realistic and then play realistically. So for example, you might set up two buildings either side of each other with a narrow path through the middle. There you go, that's a natural road that you've created that also works as an ambush site, a sniper alley. And if you can set up other terrain and use your units carefully, you can sort of funnel certain units into that area. Maybe when you're placing objective markers, you put one right inside that funnel and you say to your opponent, oh, you want that objective? Come get it. Come walk right into my trap. Come on, come on. Bang! And you take them down. And as well as that, think about the terrain special rules that you can assign. So in Age of Sigmar, generally you roll a, a d6 and it gains a rule. Most people don't probably remember to do this, I know I don't, but consider how you can amplify those rules to your advantage. So either pick them because you want them to have a certain narrative purpose, or perhaps you roll for them and then say, okay, so this one gives out a bravery boost. All right, my troops don't really need this, but let's try and hold it anyway or maybe move away from it so my opponent isn't tempted to go there and get a bravery boost. Um, it does damage, okay, I need to avoid that, but what if I can use it as another bait and kill zone? By forcing my opponent through it, or round it, then they either have to go through it and take damage, or go round it, go the long way around, and leave themselves wide open to being attacked. 
And that's something you can start to do. And of course, then you have the power of homebrew and using narrative rules to try and make the terrain feel more realistic. So again, Age of Sigmar and 40k both have mechanisms for this, uh, but consider, for example, saying, um, laying out minefields, because I don't think minefields have rules in 40k, lay out rules for minefields. Say that we're playing a, a mission, it's say Cities of Death, um, or maybe the new Urban Conquest games, and you've laid out a minefield. So your opponent is either going to have to think, do I go through that? No, I don't want to go through that. Okay, I'm going to have to go round, or I'm going to have to sacrifice something in it. Oh, flip, now I'm dead. And it's generally about trying to use, as, as I said at the top of the video, using the terrain to maximize your power. And if your opponent's doing the same thing, you need to be able to strategize and think, okay, what are they doing with the terrain? How are they deploying around how we've set this battlefield up so that they can get a, a boost out of it? So, oh, it seems they've set up a little bit of a kill funnel for me. They want me to go that way to that objective. Okay, how can I counter that? I know, I'll use my teleporting troops, drop them in and clear myself a path rather than having to run this gauntlet of death and take fire all the way through. Ah, what's this? We're going to use rules for rivers so there are natural bridges and choke points or you have to take severe movement penalties, maybe damage penalties if you cross the river without using the bridge. Okay, so what can I do there? Let's see, I can take the damage and the penalties or I can funnel myself through and make myself very, very vulnerable. Just generally, it's about strategizing. And I'm sure there are many generals sat at home who could probably go on in the comments for paragraph after paragraph of things you can do with battlefield management far more than I can. So I encourage you, if uh, this is something that interests you, to leave your thoughts in the comments below. What sort of battlefield management strategies can you employ in terms of setting up terrain, setting up your army, and then also countering opposing strategies. Because I'm no expert. I like to think I know roughly how to play the game, but I'm no expert at this game. I'm good enough to get by and make videos and lose every time I make them. But I'm not an expert in all these refined strategies. So let people know in the comments, share your thoughts. Is there anything else I wanted to say on this topic? I don't think so, other than, of course, it can be difficult to try and add these layers into games if you're not experienced at rules writing or uh, homebrewing, or if you're just not that familiar with wargaming in general, because as uh, this thread went on to state, it's quite a common thing in other systems, but maybe you're not used to that. Or maybe you're new to the game and didn't play in the older editions where there were more intricate terrain rules. Uh, as opposed to, oh, this terrain just provides a movement penalty. Back when there was difficult terrain rolls, and there were dangerous terrain rolls, and there was all sorts of other funky chicanery that went on with terrain, if you decided to remember to use all those rules. Like, ruins had rules, different buildings had rules. Oh my god, it was so, so complicated. So if you're a bit newer to it, it can be difficult. But it is something that I encourage you to explore, because if you're able, in a... A uh, semi-competitive um, match with your friends to set up a board in an interesting way and work with it. Or perhaps when you're going to a tournament, you can assess a battlefield that's laid out in front of you and decide, right, which deployment zones do I want? How can I put my units down in a way that maximizes not only what my army can do, but also what this terrain can do for my army and what it can do against my opponent? It can give you another edge in the game because... Deployment is a port is an important thing in this game. I've heard a lot that deployment is exceptionally important. I've never been any good at it. But battlefield management and terrain management comes under that deployment as well as general strategizing and working with or against the or around the terrain to get the results you want. So anyway, that was just a thought that I had because it's two in the morning and uh, I fancied rambling on a little bit. So that is my thoughts on terrain and battlefield management. As I said, let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd be very interested to see what you have to say on this matter because I'm just one person who probably isn't that experienced in the matter and just saw something on a thread that I found interesting. You guys are probably the experts, so have a conversation. I'm always interested to see your thoughts. 
Anyway, thank you very much for watching. This has been Tactica Imperialis. And if I've got my dates right, you have a few days left to get involved with our fifth birthday Q&A. Link in the top of the description. Go and get involved with that if you haven't already. I'll be closing off the questions at the end of January. So thank you very much for watching and it's been my thoughts on terrain and battlefield management. I'll see you all again. Bye for now.